Oh, one of those cigarettes. Yeah, shit, I got one the other day for the first time I tried it. Are they the ones with the, um... You what, pour oil into them. Oh, yeah, so they're not the, um, the nicotine ones. Yeah. Well, they are, you can have but, nicotine or not nicotine as you wish. I've got yeah, nicotine they, in one. But you can fill that one up yourself, is yeah. it just literally... Yeah, you press the button and draw it in. Oh, really? Can I try it? Yeah. Oh. Well, maybe you need to that one. You can well, you can do it, but you you might need to a bit harder. Hold it longer. The battery's running out. Oh no! You can hit it. You can feel the hit. Yeah. Oh, that feels like a proper cigarette. It's I'll Jeez, tell you, it's eighty. Rubbish. It's eighty percent of the pleasure with none of the downside. Well, there might be some downside. Might gives you might, maybe it gives you cancer. All I know is I can still <laughs> breathe. Yeah, Everybody yeah. I know is my age that still smokes can't breathe. And I'm a singer. Yeah. I have to breathe. Where did you uh, Where did you get those? Oh, oh everywhere. Yeah? Yeah, well. Jeez, that's excellent. Yeah, the other one, I was almost going to bring it with me, and I thought, yeah. <laughs> right. I think they're naff, but, I'm, but yeah, I'm now but it's nearly two years for me. Yeah? Nearly two years without cigarette. Yeah, no, I've got it. I've got to do it. I was, I was just thinking, it's not good enough. Yeah, I've just got it's to a, it's, They're good for people, because I love everything about smoking. I love having something in my hand, I love him. Yeah, 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 yeah that's the thing. You know, and the feel the hit on the back of your throat and the, the little pause while you think about something. I'll just think about that. <laughs> you know, or sitting around a campfire or sitting in a pub, you know what I mean? It's all it's all writing songs, doing interviews, do all the things that I really like to have a cigarette. The trouble is I hate the fact that well, I'm running to the top of the stairs and I was out of breath. Or trying to sing a line and get halfway through the line, I was running out of breath and needed another take another breath halfway through singing in the line. Yeah, yeah, and so, yeah. So, and now that doesn't do that. I'm, I feel healthy, I feel strong. Fantastic. No, no, I'm going to have one of this. Right, you ready? Kick it off. Justin Sullivan, it's a pleasure to meet you. You looking forward to the gig tonight? I am, yeah. It's been a really, uh, it's been a really good tour, I think, creatively. Uh, we haven't changed that much of what we've been doing during the tour, and that's just because we're very... Um, sure about what we're playing and the way we're playing it I think yeah, it's really kind of a does the set list sort of remain the same or change ish or? yeah no, the, much more than normal the set list has remained the first three quarters of the set has remained more or less the same for the whole thing and it's because every song seems to set up the next song in a really good way and we've changed it a couple of times just for the sake of it but it hasn't been as satisfying so we've gone back to this kind of well, then the end will change it anyway every night yeah, so that's yeah. all different but yeah, and there's a lot of different sort of changes going through a set, and like I say, every song sets up the next one. So. Yeah, to me, I have no idea how many times I've seen you in Alarm, but it's a hell of a lot. I mean, does playing still give you that sort of same old buzz that it, it did in, you know, when you first started? Yeah. It does, actually. Yeah? Fantastic. But when anyone asks me about favourite gig of all time, I always say May the 14th, 1984, the Lyceum. So the first time I saw you in Alarm and The Alarm, both massive influences on my life. Do you remember that gig at all? I do vaguely, yeah. I remember. <laughs> I remember enjoying it. I thought, I thought we were good. Oh, unbelievable! Awesome. I thought it was amazing. Fifteen. So no first time. Bit sorted me out for the rest of my life. Put it that way. What, what would you have as the best gig of your memory? Yeah. Question you can't answer. Quite, quite, quite a few along the way. <laughs> But uh, congratulations on the new album, Between Dog and Wolf. Great tunes, best chart position for 20 years. Did you uh, expect it to do so well? well? You have to take things like charts with a bit of a pinch of salt these days. You know, yeah. right? It doesn't mean to say you're selling four million records. Um, uh, still, it's been critically acclaimed. Everyone it has been critically acclaimed. Yeah. I, uh, that's quite nice, I suppose, for it to, to be, well, no, critically actually acknowledged, I think, is a kind of slight, that's a, that's a change for us. Um, I think that, that there's a couple of things about the album. One is, you know, we set out to make something a bit different. Um, uh, and it's always what we were planning to make. It was quite close to what myself and Michael in particular had in mind. And we've been talking about the layering of the drums and stuff. Mm. And I think both of us have been interest, are very interested in tension in music rather than the payoff, rather than the explosion, rather than the big anthemic chorus. We actually like the tension in it's between. True, that's... And so this album is much more about the tension in between. It's a very dark record. And um, 
But the other thing was, uh, I think we were very tired of making records that were quite well written, but not well recorded and badly mixed. And so this one, we decided we were going to make something that was sonically pleasing. And, and we have, and I think that was partly because we started by recording drums on tape. We spent a week recording drums at the beginning of the session, to some extent before the songs were even written. But we've done that before. That's not that unusual with England Lamy to write this, to do the drums before we write the songs. Um, we sometimes write, work like that. But this time we, we record on tape, and that, and there's a million computer programs out there that say this sounds just like tape. No, no, Nothing no. does. <laughs> Nothing sounds like tape. And so we started with this, you know, great sounding recorded drums, and then that allowed us to build up all these other layers of stuff and play around with ideas. And, and uh, it was a quick process actually, because we'd sort of saved up a lot of ideas. And then we were always planning to produce it ourselves, which would allow us to go up all these blind alleys and try experiment <laughs> yeah, without yeah. a producer telling us where to go. Um, but we were always planning to give it to an A-list mixer, you know, one of the top, top, top guys to mix. And we chose, I think it was Michael or Marshall's decision to choose uh, Joe Barese, a very good decision. He's a very clever guy. Mixing is a very dark, strange art. Um, <laughs> You know, uh, there are very few people that are really good at it, and he's one of them. Yeah, yeah, because you, uh, can, you can get it or you can lose it as well. Yeah. And he, um, also, it was last winter, was the everlasting winter. So, the uh, wonderful thing was that myself and Michael got to go to Los Angeles for three weeks in the middle of it. That's the record. And it was, like I said, we, from actually starting to write and, uh, you know, putting the drums together and stuff, last September, and by February, the whole thing was finished. It was actually really quick. Fantastic. What, where, what inf where did you draw from, you know, influence-wise on the album? Everywhere, anywhere, anywhere. I mean, the thing about Nimal Lamy is that no one knows what we are. <laughs> I mean, in 2010 we played a, uh, I remember we were successive weekends, we did a folk festival, a gothic festival, a hippie festival, and a straight metal festival with the same set <laughs> successive weekends. I can't think of any other band that could do that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, uh, so we, I mean, we're open to... We're trying to make something that hasn't been made before, that's the point. But obviously we take influences from everywhere. And everybody in the band comes from a different musical background. We tried once to, to, to come up with one album in the history of music that we all unreservedly loved. And we couldn't agree on one. And I think that's rare for a band not to be able to agree on a single record they all like together. <laughs> I bet, it's, yeah, it's got to be good, I suppose, that's the mix. It sort of works for us. And also there's always been this slow turnover of people in the band. I mean, there have been a number of people in the band. We don't change all the time, but every now and again someone new arrives. Yeah. And last year it was Kerry. And Kerry is, uh, Kerry was born the day we released our third album. So he's brought all that kind of youthful uh, influence in. He comes from a musical family, his parents are both old hippie folk musicians. One brother plays in front of the machine, another brother plays for Extreme Noise Terror. Ah. So he comes from a, a sort of folk background around him, but he's been in metal bands. So he brings in that kind of, you know, straight on metal yeah, thing. Yeah. Not really rock, more metal. And and then Marshall's kind of blues guy, Mark's a rock guy. Dean is more psychedelic, 60s music, that's his first love. And I'm town and Motown obsessed, I'm Northern Soul. Yeah. <laughs> that's where my background is more of that soul background. So out of that we make what we make. That's it, fantastic. Yeah, 30 years next year will be Vengeance. Uh, well, the album's released. Anything planned for that? No, more touring with Dog and Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> we did, uh, we did, uh, we did, uh, we bought the rights to, um, to Vengeance a couple of years ago and we put it out about uh, a year and a half ago or yeah. something with a whole Literally. collection of demos from that era. Combined with you know the 30th anniversary of box sets and stuff, and then there's this film that somebody's made about us. Um, that's enough looking back for me. I, I've forgotten most of the past, and I'm not very interested in it anyway. When we had the fire that wrecked our studio yeah, um, two years ago, we lost a huge archive of live tapes, and I'm really grateful. <laughs> I, I just I hate the past. I want to Saves you from going through them. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> But yeah, you can see that in one uh, one aspect. But uh, going back slightly though, uh, I met Rob Eaton outside a pub in Shoreditch absolutely years ago, and uh, 
Yeah, but you had your offices at um, Great Eastern Street, then he kept on telling me, come down, come down, but I never did for some strange reason. But we had a couple of drinks and uh, went off walking on air that day. But, you know, how much of a great drummer was he? Out of all the drummers that he were, he said there's always a line-up change. Was he particularly good? I remember live, was unbelievable. He was an amazing drummer, actually, but not only was he an amazing drummer, he was an amazing all-round musician and a very good producer. Very, very musical guy. I think that people sometimes misunderstood Robert because he was kind of big and he had this kind of uh, big hearty smile and he liked a pint and all that sort of stuff. Um, but actually, he was the most, probably the most sensitive person I've ever met. Uh, everything touched him. True musician. Michael's got some of his qualities, so he's a different sort of drummer. But I think that, uh, but Michael's a good producer, like Robert. And I think it's something to do with the fact that drummers, when they when from when they're starting, they're balancing a number of different sounds because all the drums make different sounds: hi hats, cymbals, kick. They're, they're, the idea of balancing different sounds to make a whole is what they do. And therefore, often drummers make good producers because they get this idea yeah, of balance. Yeah, 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 yeah. I never thought of that, that um, And I find Michael's a very good foil for me. I need someone to kick against. And he, he's, he's good. And a bit like Robert, he, he kind of considers. Whereas I'm, I'm all, I've got an idea, I've got an idea, I've got another idea, I've got another idea. <laughs> and, and, they, and I need someone who's, who's kind of a bit, okay. That's a bad idea, that's a good idea. You know, I need someone like that to go with. You know. Robert's yeah, you like know, that, yeah. and then Michael. <clears throat> I mean, the sound's always been very tribal, but as you're saying there about the tension, keeping the tension in there, it always sort of felt like you're fighting some sort of war. Is that what you sort of feel <laughs> in your head? No, it just comes out like that. So it's quite a, sort of an aggressive, sort of violent I like, feeling. I like all things in art that I like. Well, let's go back to nature. I'm obsessed with all things in nature, and I love the power of nature. And if anything, in music, as far as I'm concerned, or art, it's a reflection of that. I always like strong tastes in, 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 in music, and and so uh, art. I, I, I like the combination of beauty and violence. I hate stuff which is ugly for the sake of being ugly. I hate stuff which is a bit wispy. I like I like this combination of beauty and violence in there, in all of the art that I, that I take in. And I think that Nima you know, we have that. And I always think sometimes that maybe is why we've done well in Germany because they have that contradiction between being terribly oh, German and at the same time they're all terribly romantic, and all their poetry is about being lost in the forests and, and you know what I mean. And, and, and it's that combination of romance and, and directness that runs through when you would love me or beauty and violence. Yeah. But, um, you know, like I mentioned before, there's been sort of various lineup changes in New Malami over the years. You know, which sort of lineup do you, do you think was the most productive? I think there's a, the, people talk about the classic lineup of myself, Robert Stewart, which was the, but it only lasted two years. I mean, I started by with Stuart, Robert came along um, in 982. Uh, by 985, what, well, three years ago? By 985, Stuart left. So yeah, that yeah, was yeah. the explosive. Uh, and both Robert and Stuart are exceptional musicians. Exceptional, you know, exceptional people, really. Um, but when that was gone all the way up, I'd say that the current lineup is the, is the next best one or, or better. And it's different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Strong though, strong, and there's no. We argue about music, but we don't argue about other stuff really. We're quite strong together as a unit. Yeah, that's a good thing. But you know, what about on, on the solo level? Future plans or collaborations, other projects that are. Well, I did this solo album in 2002, hmm. two, three, something like that, um, which I'm very proud of. 
um, and everybody says, oh, when are you going to make another solo album? Um, and I will do, but it's just uh, time, really. Yeah, 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 it must be. About collaborations, working with any, any other people? Anyone well, I, I, you know, I've done the odd bits and pieces along the way. I did the This Is Menace record a few years ago, and then I, I, I've got I'm a guest vocalist on the current Soil, soil Work record. Ah. Um, they, they wrote to me and said, will you sing on a song? And, so sort of fine, yeah, and some Canadian sing somewhere, like, sing on her album. Bits and pieces, you know what I mean? I'm always up to doing stuff like that. Anyone that you'd sort of want to. Well, I'd love to do, you know, I'd love to, to, to uh, get Aretha Franklin to come and sing on a New World Army record, but it's not that likely. <laughs> Sometimes, actually, though, in New World Army, we're, we. I think bands operate best as gangs, in a way, and we're kind of. We're a gang. How much we bring in other people? Well, obviously there's guests on the new record. As a yeah. Toby played, uh, Toby, my friend from East Germany, played a uh, cello. Um, Kerry's brother Tom from France the Machine played harp on one track. Uh, you know, we bring in musicians as we need them. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. And what's inspiring you right now, sort of musically, artistically, writing-wise? Anything? Was it just like touring? Is a is a bit of a touring is quite tedious, uh, touring, touring, touring is quite yeah. a sort of self-contained bubble and all you can do is raise yourself for two hours a night to do the thing that you love <laughs> and the other 22 hours a day kind of time <laughs> so uh, um, all different stuff you know different stuff it's hard to think about many other bands that exist outside the mainstream or just under the, sort of the undercurrent, as it were, that have so many dedicated following and law following all over the world. What would you put it down to? I think, I think you have to ask them, really. <laughs> but I think that... The songs are about stuff, but there is no agenda and there is no orthodoxy. There isn't. I mean, we're not like sort of you know Crass or Chamwong or something where there is a there is a song where there is a message we're pushing, you know, Billy Bragg or something. There is no message that we're pushing. It's just that we're interested in stuff, and we sing about all sorts of different stuff. And we sing about it from different points of view. I mean, you know, we're starting with Vengeance, which which right-minded thinking people <laughs> so went, my God, what's this band, you know, put them out there. Uh, but it was a genuine emotion when, you know, the, the song was sort of uh, genuine. So I think we just tackle stuff full on. Numanami appears to appeal to lots of people that are working, with, somebody's told me, someone else told me this, it appeals to people that are working through a large amount of personal darkness <laughs> with, but are in, but are intelligent and want to find a way through it. There you go. Someone told me. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I I I think that it has a very strong flavour, and you either get it or you don't. And if you do, then it means that when you meet someone else that does too, you immediately have something in common. I was one, we were once going to play in Istanbul. This is some time ago. And there's a, an Irish woman that, that's been following us for a long time, and she happened to be on the same plane we were on. And I said, hey, dude, why, why are you coming to see us again? You've seen us a million times, you know. And she said, to be honest, I'm not really coming to see you, she said. She said, I'm coming to see my favourite band in Istanbul, and it's going to be someone from Istanbul's favourite band too. So immediately I have a network of people that love this very strong, particular band. And then yeah. this network stretches across the world. It's, going to happen. it's true, because then you just get so much in it. I mean, no doubt. And to me, but um, do you, you think there's a time that New Middle Army would ever ever end? Ever? Ever end? You'd sort of say, right, we've done enough. Tomorrow. <laughs> to be honest, we started to play two gigs in a pub in Bradford. We don't need a name. We need a name. We're playing two gigs next week. Oh, all right, we've got a couple of songs. What should we call ourselves? Oh, I remember sitting there with a bottle of wine and chills and. Maybe Stuart and uh, that's one thing even names. We had a long list of names. We picked new Lamy to do. We were only doing two gigs in a pub. <laughs> and slowly, that, they were pretty good, so we thought we'd do another one. And it's still a bit like that. I, 
I've left the band <laughs> half a dozen times, <laughs> you know, but never for more than 24 hours. But we're always on the, it's not a, we're always a little bit, oh, it's always a bit on edge. Yeah, 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 which is, you know, um, but that's what keeps it as, as yeah, fresh, yeah, yeah, uh, on the edge. But uh, what's the best thing in being in New Model Army then? What's the, the best, best thing? thing about being in New Model Army? I'll tell you what the best thing about being in New Model Army is, is freedom. Because we don't belong to a genre, because we never had a big hit single, because uh, we always guarded the rights to do exactly what we wanted and the way we wanted, when we wanted, um, and, and because success, worldly success, was never the primary motivation, that has given us complete freedom. Brilliant. And, um Thanks a lot for your time, so come on, I won't take up too much more. But you know, if you had to say to, what are three tracks across the whole sort of New Middle Army's repertoire that will sum you up as a band? You couldn't do it. There's 220 or something, so no, not really. <laughs> not even one favourite? Oh, I've got my own personal favourites, but yeah, they, I know, they, they I can often be very obscure. Um, personal favourites, Modern Times, Dawn of High. Um, uh, Quite a lot of the new album, actually. I'm not sure. Yeah, a lot of it. Different. But it does change as well. Yeah, great. Well, thanks a lot for your time. Anything else you'd like to say to Music News uh, Watchers? Hello, Music News Watchers. <laughs> uh, music is a wonderful thing. Don't undervalue it. Fantastic. Well, really looking forward to the gig tonight. It's been a pleasure. Thanks a lot. Cheers. I'm going to buy one of those. What are they actually called with them? Well, uh, these are. Wait, are you telling me there's no. Because what's the hit you get? That feels, that feels even stronger than a cigarette, to be honest. Uh, well, you, can, you pour oil in there, and there's a vaporizer which turns it into steam. And what's in the, in the oil? You can have nicotine or not nicotine as you wish. Oh, that's absolutely excellent. I've never. But where do you get them? Because I've tried looking online. There, there are lots of places online. This is from a website called a little, a little cottage industry in Wales called Smokers Halo. But there's lots of them online, really, really, it's really. Not nice. say a name on it or something. Does it say Smokers Halo? No, it just gives the size of the berry. But yeah, I'm definitely going to get one of those. Oh man. Same. Different, slightly different right. flavour in that one. At least you get the hit because these other ones just yeah, didn't yeah. sort of give you any. Yeah, yeah. It's just sort of. You have as much hit as you want. It's about as much nicotine. Yeah. At least you have. No, no, but this had sort of loads of nicotine. But you just, you could sort of blow out something. But I mean, Marlboro Reds and yeah, all this yeah. sort of, you know. But I couldn't get it to be honest.